morning everyone if you can hear me let me know you're probably getting confused if you're seeing two of me but i'm going to be chain flying and i wanted to see if i could set up a better angle so more than one person could see me uh, let me just check on my phone if uh, I'm actually live. Am I live on Facebook? Okay, I see someone is watching. Can you please let me know what platform you are on? That would help. I think I'm live on YouTube only, I guess. Let's see. Give me a few seconds while I fix this. Sorry about the wait, but I will start soon. look like I am live I just don't um... oh my god stuff has changed so much out here reason my Facebook live is not working. Let's see. Channel Facebook. Okay, continue. Okay, looks like now we are live on Facebook as well. Okay. Hey, uh, Diana, just, uh, um, I think I should be live on Facebook now. Yeah, okay. Looks like, looks like we are live. Thank you for your patience. I wasn't reading the messages. Hey Catherine, good morning, good morning. Yes, I am. So, I am chain flying. I am not the best at it. Let me tell you that up front. But, I did want to uh, I did get into a rhythm 
yesterday, last night, and I was like, oh, this might be a good live stream to do. It has been a while. So I am standing almost uh, seven feet away right now. It's probably the reason why you cannot hear me when I'm that far away. But yeah, I'm seven feet away. Uh, so I can get a good, nice, long chain going on here. And if I don't want to go that far, I can actually come close as well, which I'm going to do now because I want to move my hook. So I'm going to stand here. I'm going to do it in successions maybe. Or I can hold it here. I can stop the view. While holding that, I can move my hook forward. Hey Anne, nice to see you again, and it was a pleasure meeting you at Flyaway. Even though it was like at that very last day, but it was sure was fun chatting with you. And I think you're in the process of getting a dateless feed, right? Oh, Catherine, you can hear me from seven feet away. That's good. That's good to know. So the e-wheel, I do like the fact that, um, you know, it's easy that I can do such a long chain fly. I don't have to be treadling on the wheel. Yee, da, na, 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 is here on Facebook now. This is a single that I had spun and I was actually spinning at Flyaway uh, from Corgi Hill Farms. It is a Pullworth Yak and Silk Blend and it was a top that has been, um, that had been dyed as a gradient. And it went from like burgundy, blue, bluish purple, to a blue, to a gray. Then from gray, it goes to a yellow. So I'm going to come a little closer right now because I want to stop my view. I want to hold my loop there while I move my hook forward. I'm moving the hook is not automated. That I still need to do manually, but I don't particularly mind. And I can again walk really far away from the wheel. Diana, you like to chain ply. I have just, you know, every time I do it, I get a little better. But this is, I think, 
finally the first time that I felt like a certain rhythm. Oh yes, you do it on a spindle. Yeah, you don't even do it on a wheel. Man, you got it. <laughs> not the worst. <laughs> Now I have spun this over a long time, so it's not the most consistent singles. going to make two more. Oh yes, splicing a chain ply. Fortunately, only when I started, I had to, uh, you know, splice it. And I didn't have to splice it even if it was like in the first yard when I was just trying to get set up. So far, that's the only time that my single broke. I had rebound the single just to check. Well, thank you for dropping by, Catherine. Oh, after the blue, it's actually like a brown and then after the brown I think the color turns green. I just finished the spin and I've already forgotten the color sequence. There was that section in between. Now I've stepped really far away. going to make with it that just be thankful that I'm plying something you know how much I procrastinate even about plying stuff it's going to be a fingering weight yarn that I know and I'm hoping to get at least maybe 500 or so yards with it uh, it was a five ounce braid so, you know, it was more than your traditional four rounds. And uh, so, yeah, like a fingering weight gradient. So, I guess a cowl would be nice. Or I need to adjust the tension on my bobbin a little bit. And uh, so yeah, it's a gradient and uh, fingering weight yarn. I this is sorry, this is a probably finest I've spun um, to do you know chain ply. So we'll see. Uh, did your mother finish her sweater, Diana? Uh, which one? The one that uh, get done with Jillian's? Uh, oh, not Jillian. Sorry, into the world. That one, that one she had finished last summer. But no, she wanted to start another sweater. Uh, we didn't even get to start it, actually. Um, I was pretty busy when I was in Dallas this time. And uh, we just couldn't 
find the time for her to even swatch. So I had taken, you know, the yarn that you had uh, given me and she combined that. Uh, she wanted to do another, uh, what's the pattern called? Um, glacier tunic, which she had done with the into the world fiber. So, so she had the yarn for it, but she was like, she when we went to ply away we went to this yarn shop called um, yarn social and at that store she saw a chevron sweater which she really really liked she's like can i knit this instead i was like sure i i'm forgetting the name of the pattern so i bought the pattern and then when i came uh, to a place to print the pattern the pattern is 35 pages long and you know granted it's for multiple sizes so I was like okay you know what it's fine we just need to print certain pages they had listed the number of pages to knit for a certain size so I said let's not get overwhelmed with the number of pages uh, seemed like a pretty straightforward pattern as such but the chevrons kind of even shape uh, your waist and things like that. So it kind of got a little complex. But I said, maybe we can simplify it. But the first thing to do was make a swatch. So this is the thing with making a swatch with something that has a long repeat. Not just making a swatch, just getting each. Because it was... Um, it was an 18-stitch repeat for the chevron, so we had to, you know, we did at least two repeats for her gauge. I would like to have done three at least, but, you know, it's hard to convince my mom to... Uh, I wanted to show you the amount of twist I'm having. I don't know if you can see that in the camera view. Can you? Yeah, I maybe have a little more twist than I would like, but we'll see. But anyway, she uh, she did make the swatch, but we were like, just, we were like in between gauges. I think it required six stitches per inch, but we were getting like five and a quarter, which is a big difference. But what happened, like, I said, okay, then let's just stitch the size. Um, Yeah, so we were going to stitch the size larger, but the difference between the two sizes was so much that it wouldn't work out. So we kind of struggled with that. Then I said, okay, this requires me redesigning this thing, which is not going to be easy. This is the thing that I hate sometimes about chain plying, that I have to do crazy antics with my hands. But yeah, so it kind of got to be like a real complex thing to figure out how to knit it so that it would land up being her size and then when I saw the 35 pages of pattern I was like okay I need to be around you while you're knitting this at multiple steps of the way because firstly you're not getting gauge and then I don't know what kind of shaping adjustments will need to be done throughout so yeah we kind of didn't make progress on that much other than her making that swatch but uh, she did start the glacier tuning again finally with her yarn she just told me that uh, so hopefully that is progressing fine It's easier to gain or lose weight to fit the sweater than to adjust sweater size. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Seems like a challenge for me to do that too. But yeah, sometimes for a sweater like that, yeah, I would be like, just lose the weight or gain the weight. Gain the weight would be easier, I think. At least for me. I just need to look at ice cream and I gain weight. I'm, I'm 
glad with the consistency I'm getting with this yarn so it doesn't feel like you know that I've gone from super thick to super thin there are a few sections in between which are not as great as I would like them but uh, overall the yarn does look pretty decent quite happy with it This is the position I've kind of found it to be convenient is to place my uh, bobbin on a lazy cake right next to my wheel actually on the left side of my wheel and under some tension so that the yarn doesn't keep curling on itself and making a mess Okay, so from brown, now I have moved out to a grey colour. I know you can not see the colours because the whole bobbin is not coming in view. But, get a little closer here. And I don't want to adjust the cameras. It took me forever to do this. Hi, bi B. Bimo. Hello. How are you doing? So, B. Bimo is joining us from Twitch. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The final says that she is doing good. That's good to hear. Is are you in the United States? Is it morning time for you? Because usually there are people from all over the world and never know whether I need to wish them good morning or good night or good evening I should say oh you're from India good evening to you it must be what like eight eight o'clock in the evening there Which part of India are you from, if I may ask? Yep, 7.15. Kerala. I visited Kerala in 2014, actually. I am originally from Mumbai. Oh, cool, south side. So I had visited, it was, you know, one of those touristy trips where we flew into Cochin and then uh, went to Munar, saw the tea plantations and everything. Beautiful, beautiful part of the country. Namaste. And yeah, we had, I had never seen uh, Kerala before. So it was a nice trip. I loved visiting the spice gardens. That was fun. India and spices go together, right? I have to. And we also went to the backwaters. We we didn't stay overnight on the boats because we were warned of the mosquitoes. But uh, we spent the entire day on the boat. Uh, there was fish that was cooked for us in the boat, which was extremely delicious. It's an experience on its own. So do you do any spinning? Is my question. Or what brings you to my channel? Hmm. 
Yes, the fish is cutting me. And it was interesting when, you know, we were on the boat, the guy just stopped by the shore and a guy jumped off the boat and purchased onions and tomatoes from a street vendor at one of those stops and some fish and uh, came back in the boat and uh, made some fish for us. It was fresh, fresh, fresh. And he cooked it in different ways as well. He fried some and then he also uh, made a curry with some of it. The one, the two things actually I was surprised with was when I visited Kerala was the the dosas and everything there tastes so much different from the dosas that we have in Mumbai. Yes, I travel. We traveled in a houseboat, and we were a big group. Uh, I think there were eleven of us. I was traveling with my in-laws and my extended family. It was a nice long trip. traveled on Kuttandan Lake. I, I don't know where exactly we traveled. Start, the, I, the place started with K, but it wasn't that. Uh, maybe it'll come to me. Maybe you know better what are the popular backwater places out there. I know it started with K. Continuing my spin, I moved into the brown color. Yeah, I could have traveled to, to Kutandan Lake when I was there. I can't remember. It's been a while. It's been eight years. A small loop here. So I can stop this and move my hook a little bit. Maybe eventually you will see the bobbin filling up. Kuttanadi. Maybe. I, I really cannot remember. Yes, now I'm living in the US. I've been here for 20, 22, 22 plus years now. So I've been here for a while. Up here in Seattle.
have to see them more than your age. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm that many years old. Way old. I'm probably twice your age then, in case you're wondering. Uh, the machine I'm spinning on is an e-spinner. Uh, you might be familiar with like a charkha. So it's kind of similar to that. Not really really but it's essentially a, a spinning wheel you know on which you spin fiber to make yarn uh, the only difference is that this is electric uh, so that's what makes it a little different that's how I can walk away from it yeah it's kind of like a chakha with a motor you could say that in simpler terms right now is plying some yarn I need to adjust the tension of my in a little bit if you can see the brown color creeping up out here bye Diana thank you so much join together the thread so what I'm doing right now is I'm not really joining it it's all one long thread um, are you familiar, familiar with uh, crocheting you know how you make a chain so basically that's what I'm doing here that's why this is called chain plying and so I have a big loop here and I have my single thread coming out and I just keep pulling that single thread through the loop and I make a chain. So what I land up with is like a three ply yarn. Because like the single by itself, it has a lot of twist in it. So you need to kind of balance it, you know, in the opposite direction. I could split the fiber in half and make it a two-ply yarn or split it in threes and just ply three of them together. But because this is, uh, the fiber was dyed like a gradient going from one color to the next. Uh, it went from burgundy red to uh, like a purple, to a blue, to a gray, to a brown, to a yellow. So I want to kind of keep the colors in order. So chain plying kind of works as a good way to do that. You can keep the colors in the same order. They don't get mixed up. Because if I did a two ply, I could land up with a yellow section with a red section, a blue section with a gray section, and would kind of just jumble up all my colors. 
it will still make an interesting yarn though. But chain plank just keeps it all together. Thread joined with multiple color. I, I don't know what that means. While chain plying, I don't have the prettiest bobbin. It all looks like a big jumble with all the hills and valleys on it. But um, it works fine on the magpie because there's just so much room on the spinning wheel that I can just fill it up. So I've moved into brown and I think after brown I have a big grey section and then I have a bright yellow. a very interesting yarn and I have to think of a project to knit with it after that's done. How many years experience you have in this work? I have been spinning since 2016, I think. So I've been spinning for like around six years now. So not a whole lot. But there was always something new to learn in spinning, which is what I really enjoy. You can see my other spinning wheel behind, you know, that one. That's like my treadle wheel, which you move with your feet and spin.
all these see now the board and is filling up further with like a grayish brown color Yeah, the behind one does look like a charkha, but it's just bigger in size and slightly different. <coughs> it's also different the way you sit on it. Um, this particular one you like sit in front. Uh, as a charkha, you're kind of sitting on the side. So just small differences and then a charkha goes at a much higher speed because it's a spinning cotton and that wheel also can go at pretty high speeds. I haven't spun cotton yet. Hi Stacy, good morning. implying the project I was working on at Flyway. So I'm also on different platforms if y'all are wondering. I'm on Twitch, Facebook and YouTube. So there are people joining me from different places. And I'm trying to keep up with everyone. Stacy, have you jumped into your stash yet? <laughs> yes, using the magpie <laughs> the way I'm chain flying is like using a walking wheel. And I'm, at this point, I'm like around seven feet away from my wheel, which is insane. So fun. That's a good rhythm I have going. And then I have to walk myself close a little bit when it's time to move my hook, which is right about now. So it started with burgundy, purple, blue, went to brown, now I'm on a gray color. And uh, after that, there'll be a bright yellow. <laughs> yeah, so Bimal is on Twitch and is wondering that they don't see anyone in the chat, but I keep calling out names. Uh, Stacy is asking, is that cotton? No, this is uh, singles that I was spinning on my spare time. Uh, in the last few months, uh, it is a Pullworth Yak and Silk Blend from Corgi Hill. Corgi Hill Farms or Corgi Hill Fibers. I think it's Farms. But yeah, it uh, was dyed as a gradient and I spun the singles on a sparrow, probably the finest I have spun so far. And yes, lovely blend and the colors were just amazing. I did struggle through the brown portion of it though. I find it so hard to spin brown the gray i was fine with because the gray had a little blue in it and then let it later the gray had a little yellow in it so it was fine but the brown was just a oh, struggle and even now while flying i can see my consistency doing the brown was not great because i was just not having fun with it but it worked out it's 
all spun up and hopefully I'll finish applying this today as well but it is taking forever okay, I'm too far away now to walk closer did you dive into your stash stage to have a plan for the yarn everyone keeps asking me that and my response is just be thankful I'm plying <laughs> I procrastinate so much about plying that I just keep spinning singles and leave my singles on storage bobbins I'm plying that that was the plan for this yarn get it get the singles plied that's the plan It'll depend actually on how much yardage I get. It's a go it's going to be a fingering weight yarn. Uh, that's what it's looking like. And uh, yeah. Bad consistent wise, consistency wise, because you know how um, your know, inconsistencies show up threefold when you're chain flying. But this so far has not been too bad. So Stacy says you have dived a bit into my new stash, and you really want to spin the flax that you bought from him still. So that would be fun. You did take a class on spinning flax too, right? If I remember. Now, are you going to Maryland? That's this weekend, right? Yeah, I think it started today. No, I'm not. I'm sitting here in my studio. I'm not going to Maryland. It's, it's the other side of the country. And because the show started today, I'm here sitting in Seattle, chain flying. So, no need to feel jealous. I was curious if I needed to be jealous of you since you were going. <laughs> yeah, I have never been to Maryland or to Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck is on my list of places to go. It would be nice. But I would like to went there but I have no idea how that would be possible traveling and taking pottery all the way there oh, you did go a few years ago see now I'm jealous I never went and uh, so, uh, in other news, I did uh, get accepted to Wend at uh, Dallas Fiber Festival, which is in September, end of September. 
so that's kind of exciting I just got back from Dallas and I was going back in September hopefully if everything works out uh, does mean that I have to figure out how to take my work my display and everything out there but I also figured that uh, I'm going to be teaching and vending at the Daedalus uh, Spinning Retreat, which is happening in March next year. So the stuff that doesn't sell in Dallas or, you know, my display stuff and all, that can just go from Dallas to Kentucky, man. I don't have to ship it back, hopefully. So I'm kind of seeing if that works out. Oh, Stacy, I have a question for you. Maybe I should ask you in private. Maybe I'll... Okay, message me later and I'll ask you later. Oh... Yes, definitely you should come to Daedalus. It's going to be fun. I'm teaching uh, two classes. Uh, one is going to be core, core spinning. So I'm teaching art yarn classes on the Magpie. So I'm going to do a core spinning class. And I'm going to do a class of, with stacks which look like beads and also which include beads. That class you're just gonna have fun with. There's gonna be uh, some playing around and stuff. Yeah, and even the core spinning class. There's just so much you can do with core spinning. So I'm gonna be teaching those two classes. So I, I hope to see you there and I hope you come into my classes. I don't know how much of an art yarn spinner you are, but I hope to convert more people into art yarn spinning. <laughs> I know there aren't many of them, but art yarn spinning is a lot of fun. get in you'd like to take one of the one with the beads you have just got into art yarn spinning and you are converted wonderful to hear yes I'm gonna be uh, I actually am glad I took so the, f <laughs> the class I took with James on long draw is the first time I took a spinning class from someone in person I mostly learn through online videos, also my artist in residence program, and things like that. So I've never sat with somebody in person. I'm an enabler of the highest order. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll take that. But, um, but yeah, after taking James' class, I kind of decided to do things a little different uh, in my class. Uh, means the techniques of course is what I'm teaching but just set up and um, you know just just certain things of how to conduct the class it gave me some ideas so I'm gonna play around with those and see because his class was just so amazing yes his class was amazing he is amazing so I'm gonna steal some ideas And it's, it's essentially more like 
I was earlier thinking of people, you know, can bring their own fiber, and if they don't have the fiber, they can buy it from me and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't want to sit there conducting this whole thing about, you know, whether people have the right fiber or not, or who wants to buy, who doesn't want to buy, who wants to use your own, who wants to use your own, but maybe buy a little bit. Like, I don't want to be sitting there doing transactions. I just want to be teaching. So, I think I'm just going to include all the fiber as part of the class fees so that the focus can be all on the class. So that was the one big takeaway from his, his class. I'm like, yeah, there is just so much to do. Walk around and see what everyone is doing. I don't want to add on this whole idea of me selling bats and collecting money and keeping track of who has what and who has paid and who hasn't and all that kind of stuff. So. Hi, Avanita. See, after chatting with you, what started? I'm chain plying on the magpie. And I finally got into the rhythm of it. Yes, it is quite early. Uh, we were chatting last night. <laughs> so I, I was chatting with uh, Evanita, who is, you know, a master in chain plying. And I think she is going to be teaching a class in chain flying at the Daedalus Retreat, if I'm not mistaken. Bye, Bimal. Nice to see you. So yes, I kind of have picked up a lot of tips from Evanita regarding filling up my bobbin and chain flying. So I highly recommend her class as well. Bye, Stacy. Have a great day. So I'm doing a whole seven foot walk away from my wheel when I'm chain flying. The magpie sure makes that easy. And sometimes I run out of room in my studio as to how much I can walk back. But I'm glad I can get these nice long chains going. Good morning, Wendy. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, Evanita, your class is cancelled. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear. Well, I'm... I, I really hope you at least make it there because it would be really nice to see you in person. Well, I've kind of seen you in person a little bit during the pandemic, but you know, you know what I mean. And yes, chain flying while standing is awesome. I the one thing I do keep struggling with is the tension on my bobbin. I'm using the Ecoworks Lazy Kit, but as the weight on my bobbin keeps changing, I need to keep adjusting the tension. I'm going like, no, I need to adjust it again. So, but other than that, it's been going pretty smooth. right when I said it's going pretty smooth because I have developed a big twisty here. That's because I got distracted. But hopefully I can fix it. Look at the amount of twist on that thing. Okay. I 
I just have to be patient. I know I can handle it. There we go. It's taken care of. And that's what it was. At the minute I said that was when I realized that I had to adjust the tension on my bobbin again. And that's when it started flying back on itself. Yeah, patience is key and uh, it has been taken care of. So, not a big problem. Other than now I'm caught up in my fly and I made a big mess here. But even that is fixable. Fixable, fixable? Yes, fixable. There we go. So I have need to say it was the best, but do who? Yes. Uh, you know, you if you're not comfortable with something, then uh, it's just, it's not going to be fun for anyone. It won't be fun for you. It won't be fun for the students. So it will be fine. I thought I was going to adjust the tension of my bobbin, which I didn't, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, let's see if that works. That should work. Okay, now that is too much tension. <laughs> Or something or the other. Stop. There we go. See, Evanita, what happens? You make me nervous. I'm like, oh my god, the expert is watching. I need to do this just right. I did uh, manage to fix all those crazy things that were happening, so I did survive it. Okay, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I still am. And this is what I do when I want to move closer to the wheel to move the hook. Weird things you have to do. There we go. Too much.
so when do you prefer to use your Daedalus versus the Landrum then? He asked. Good question. I have a different project on my Landrum and different projects on different wheels essentially. Um, so on my Landrum is a sweater spin that I've been spinning since May of last year um, towards the end of it. So that I have just one last bobbin to finish. So, you know, that's the wheel on that project. Uh, it's kind of like my default yarn. Uh, like the one that would spin up into a three ply worsted weight yarn for a sweater. That's what I like to do on my Lendrum. On the Sparrow, I like to, on the Daedalus Sparrow, I like to spin fine. Um, and what I've been, uh, so this, these singles that I'm plying right now is a Pullworth Yak and Silk Blend, which was a five ounce braid that I spun on the Sparrow. And yes, all five ounces fit on the Sparrow just fine with actually more room to spare. And uh, I started on another project on the Sparrow. So the Sparrow I like for traveling purposes and you know, long continuous spin. I'm spinning fine, it's gonna take a long time. But also it's, you know, a one bobbin project. That's what I like on the Sparrow so far. And uh, on the Landrum, because I know it's sitting at home, it's going to be long term. I do a sweater project on it. Uh, I don't want to be traveling a sweater quantity of fiber with me when I'm traveling, so I choose a smaller wheel on which I can spin really fine, so which is going to take me a while to finish. So that makes it just the right kind of travel thing to do. And uh, on the Magpie, I am actually flying this on the magpie because with chain plying I get lazy about moving my hook regularly so I had a feeling I would make a mess on the sparrows bobbin so I said well let's just use the magpie's uh, regular flyer to do the chain plying so I can make big mountains and valleys without worrying whether my fiber will fit in or not so that's why I am flying on it now so essentially I'm using all these wheels plus not to forget I still have the aura on which I like to spin art yarns which I also am using the magpie for so I'm kind of using all my wheels and every time I finish a project on a wheel I kind of have to think what project I need to start on it because it's a question of how long the project is going to take um, versus you know do I want to travel with it is it a long-term project do I want to be occupied with that one project forever so those kinds of things which kind of help me determine whether uh, which wheel should I do this on now my sweater spin uh, is almost done. I told you I have just one last bobbin to finish on the land room. I'm still deciding on what wheel to ply it on. It's uh, 40 ounces of singles. It's going to be a three ply yarn. At least that's what the plan is. But I really don't know what wheel to ply the whole thing on. Since I wanted to ply it on the magpie, but that's going to occupy my wheel for quite some time. I could ply it on the Aura with the overdrive big jumbo bobbin. Hello, Brian. That's another magpie person. been a while 
oh I don't think I'll be able to be there in today's Saturday's spin even. Because I have family visiting. So good idea. Evanita say good idea. Yes, and Brian also has a big orange man. Bye. <laughs> So I think Evanita was talking about a good idea being that I ply my sweater spin on the Aura Overdrive bobbin, which would be a good idea, except that that's so much treadling. And Evanita, you know, once you get an e wheel, how lazy you get to treadle, right? Brian, can you attest to that too? And oh, Magpie Art Flyer. Yes, that that is what I'm thinking. But I thought the traditional, uh, I mean, the regular flyer on the Magpie would be a lot better because I don't know about you know the amount of crazy bouncing that might happen with the Art Flyer since it is a a traditional three ply worsted weight so and you know yes I can make a big big skein on the magpies art flyer with a worsted weight yarn but it's going to be so hard for me to make a skein out of it I don't have a jumbo skein winder or anything and then you know then the problem is well how do i wash such a big skin and then I, mean, I know how to wash it then drying it becomes hard like it, there are a lot more complexities to making a really big skin of yarn Thanks. you all know i do like a big yarn baby but still so brian you still need to sell your Kiwi too because you just don't use it anymore. Yeah. See, I, I, I do use my treadle wheels. Right? But so far I haven't had the heart of selling any of my wheels. Yeah, it's too big for a skin. So I think I will ply it on the regular flyer. But again, I don't want to occupy my magpie with plying forever. But maybe it won't take that long. I don't know how long it'll take. But I should get a pretty decent size skein on the regular flyer on the Magpie too. So I'm not too concerned. And actually a manageable size skein. And you know, it'll be multiple skeins, which is fine. Because even if I do make a big massive skein of yarn, you know, can wash it and dry it successfully. How am I going to take the whole thing? It's going to be in multiple cakes when it comes to knitting it anyway. So, took you two hours to ply community bobbins. Well, you are an expert. And I've been like chain plying this one for started early early this morning I did start a little last night and then I went like oh this is a good rhythm I've got going maybe I'll do this live so I essentially have been spinning flying this since morning and it's been a few hours I'm close to the end of it and a traditional uh, Three ply would be a lot faster, I believe, than you know me doing this dance around with a chain ply. I do have a lot. Uh, I'm out to the last color right now. 
yes it's definitely good that i'm standing and i'm doing this when i was sitting i was just having such tiny loops for my chain fly and that really always bothered me about the whole chain flying process <laughs> get those steps in yeah since i'm not treadling while uh spinning this this kind of counts as exercise so evanita brian is on youtube that's i'm chatting on him up there evanita is on facebook and now that i've said that brian will go on all the five platforms or something and be chatting with me confusing me but i get to see it all on one screen so not a problem i can handle that <laughs> oh evanita you have, don't encourage brian he'll go on all platforms and type half sentences and all the different platforms and then i'll have to piece it all together so this time i I wasn't looking at the screen. I was taking care of my chain out here. So, so okay, I got it. What are you talking about? See, see, Avanita, what you started. Or maybe I encouraged it some. But these kids and all the other different social media platforms. Just attention and move my hook again. Oh my god, Evanita, if you saw my bobbin, you would go crazy. You might just fail to recognize me. It looks like such a mess. But hey, it's all getting plied. That's all that matters right now. Oh my goodness, that's way too much tension on the bobbin. <laughs> it's not my bobbin, not my problem. <laughs> That's the reason why I decided. Wait a second, can't you see Brian? My hands are occupied. I'm not moving my camera right now to show you the bobbin. And plus, I still want Evanita to be on the stream. I don't want her to sign off looking at my crazy bobbin. But I will show it at the end. Do not fear. And I'm almost to the end. So. That's why I'm struggling a little bit with my bobbin since the tension keeps changing. And my bobbin is pretty lightweight at this moment. Okay, 
I think I will. I will give you a glimpse of my bob and stop crying. And Evanita needs to promise she's not going to leave. the bobbin and that's that's what would happen but there you go can you see my bobbin <laughs> you're fine Evanita says okay Brian have a good look Evanita don't faint but you can see all the colors well you can't see the burgundy that's all hidden down there but you know that that's all that's left there's that little bit left on the storage bobbin. And maybe that's why I'm having trouble is because um, my storage bobbin is a cardboard bobbin which doesn't have much weight on it. So, and because it's not... Um, you know, the tensioner on the lazy tape does not have, it's not touching the surface of the bobbin evenly. That is another reason why I'm having that trouble. But uh, if you know me, I do like to rewind my bobbins and because I like to just keep storing my singles, I do like storage bobbins. They are cheaper, but of course they have their disadvantages. that my fiber my single hasn't broken at all throughout this entire spin which is quite a relief because that's one thing I did not want to handle is dealing with a broken single while I'm chain plying Another cool thing I learned from James, I'm sharing all of James' secrets from his class, is when there's a break in a single what he does, which I think was such a clever trick. Uh, they made a larger felt washer from cheap graphite. So I do have, uh, well, I have the felt washer which comes with acre works um i should maybe try making a bigger one you're right that might provide better surface area so better tension as well the tensioner on the lazy k that kind of always it, it works sometimes but if it's not an even you know perfect bobbin it doesn't work that well But yes, I was talking about a trick from James' uh, class. I took his long draw class at Flyway. Uh, but you know what he does when his singles breaks or something happens like that? He just ties a big fat knot out there and just continues to ply. No split splicing, nothing at all. Because the fact of the matter is, no matter how you try to do it, your yarn might look pretty, but it's always going to be a weak spot, you know, especially if you're using it as warp or something, and it's like, 
you know what, just just tie a big knot and then when you come to it while knitting your sweater or warping or doing anything, you can just cut it there and do a join like you would do when you are at the end of a skein for a project. And I'm like, that makes things so much easier. Yes, your yarn will not look super pretty at the end if it has these big fat knots in it but you know if it is for your purposes and it gets the job done then why not and if it is less stress definitely you'll need to go Anita says for my cotton yarn, she definitely makes knots. It's gonna be for weaving, so it's better to have it. Yeah, so that you know, you're not hiding a flimsy joint somewhere in your single. So, definitely makes sense. Pollyann says, I thought it was a lathe <laughs> and I started another hobby. No, it's not a lathe. <laughs> that would be cool though. But hey, let's not go there. Not starting another hobby. Yes, it's always about the less stress method, which I prefer. Less stress, practical. That's the way I like to be with my spin. If it works, if it is less stressful, that's the way to go. And you can always photograph things pretty. That's that's just a different skill set. Always hide a knot in a picture. Not a problem. I'm so close to finishing this. I can almost taste it. I haven't even had my coffee this morning. It's like 8.30. I just finished breakfast. Uh, that's neat. And see, when you're chain flying, you kind of don't want to stop. You just kind of want to be done with it. Though I do like the echo works for one thing is like I can place my loop on it. And I think I saw Evanita do that. Or someone do that. But. Uh, All those sticks that poke up from the Acre Works thing, you can kind of put your loop on it so you don't lose it when you're spinning, when you're flying. So if I want to take a break, I could, but I also want this done. And I haven't moved my hook for a while, but that's okay. Just move a little closer to the wheel so I can move the hook. Because I do like to move the hook when I'm placing a small loop in my hand, it just becomes easier to manage. Okay. Hopefully, that was the last time I had to move it. Yes, the shaft guide. Yep, you can put the loop on pause. Okay, so there's a squeaking sound that's happening. That's because of my bobbin. I don't know if you can pick it up on your on your speakers. 
the squeaking wheel is not happening from the wheel it's from my bobbin spinning on the acre works lazy plate that's because i have a very cheap bobbin there oh you butterfly to get closer to the wheel yeah that's another option I'm just glad I have managed to chain ply this. I, I have chain plied before, but I've never. Uh, it's the first time I've done it on a magpie for one thing, but also my chains were never this long. I always sat and I chain plied. So this time I'm like, wow, I can really walk so much further away which is pretty amazing yeah and that's what i realized last night like you're saying my movements look good nice and relaxed and that's what it was last night when i started doing i said okay i think i finally found the rhythm that i'm comfortable with and And it was going nice and even and not having any crazy issues of you know my three threads not entering my ply twist evenly like everything was going pretty good and all my you know they're all being held at the same tension and also what used to happen is I used to land up dragging the single in the loop, making that point in my loop weaker with the way I used to chain ply earlier. So I kind of figured by keeping my bobbin in front of me, I can avoid that stress at that one particular point when I'm dragging the single through the loop. If you all know what I mean. Or maybe I'm just jumbling words here. You're going like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Which is fine. This is not a class. I'm not here to teach you how to spin or chain ply. I don't need to use the technically right words. See, Evanita gets it. The angle where your signal goes through the area is very important. Exactly. See, that's the reason why, Evanita, I think you're going to be a good teacher. Brian understood as well. See? So I, so I can talk sense. I'm kind of doing this very weird loopy thing because now my bobbin thinks it has way too much tension on it and I don't know why it keeps changing like that. not like the worst way to do it but this is what causes that stress on that turnaround loop when I chain fly like that and I used to do something similar to that earlier so I, I don't essentially recommend 
recommend it. But right now, because I'm having tension problems at my bobbin end, and this is my storage bobbin. Okay, next time I'm gonna try doing this with a regular bobbin. And maybe I'll try your felt technique as well. Yeah, the very end is, yeah, it's kind of like, everything feels like it has a mind of its own, plus you're at the last stretch. And you're losing your patience now for a lot of things. Yeah, rewind. And I did get uh, three extra sparrow bobbins. I did buy them just before flyaway because I needed them for James' class. So I do have storage bobbins. I mean, I could use sparrow bobbins now. So rather than winding it on cardboard. I could wind them on a sparrow bobbin, which would be a lot better than this wobbly cardboard bobbin. Maybe for long term use, it's fine to put it on a storage bobbin, but while chain plying, especially, I think a good bobbin would really help. Things you learn. And these kinds of things you learn only by doing it and figuring out why certain things don't work. So I say keep, keep practicing and trying and seeing what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah, I have totally changed my movement now of how I'm flying this. I'm creating a loop, making sure there's no drag, and then pulling across, swapping my hands back and forth, feeding my yarn, feeding the twist, which is also a pretty nice rhythm actually. I can still get a pretty good stretch. that much to spare that is the one cool thing about chain plying okay one view of my crazy bobbin which is all done it's not too bad yes it does have some crazy amount of hills and valleys but yeah so the, this was a squeaking sound happening and see that it's it's so unlevel and um, that's the tensioner I was using and because it doesn't let's see if I can place the camera properly so you can see what's happening here let's move that down a little bit so I have that felt ring out there but I don't know if Brian is still there. Uh, but he was talking about a bigger felt ring. I could try that. But I think for chain plying, what I would do is um, wind it on to a sparrow bobbin because now I do have I do have six one six of them. So I'm definitely going to do that. Currently, what I have on my sparrow is a very fun spin. Uh, it's a fiber I got from Becca uh, Daedalus uh, Spotted You. I don't know if she's still under the name of Spotted You, but uh, it's her Cormo, which was dyed in tequila sunrise colors. It is fluorescent orange and yellow and hot pink, favorite colors. And it's, um, I'm intentionally spinning it a slightly thicker. Uh, I'm not spinning it very fine. Uh, I want to make it like two ply or maybe a three ply worsted bait yarn. I don't want to go very skinny on it, but um, but it's looking good. And uh, 
as far as this guy is concerned you can see I think I think I've got a pretty decent weight yarn it's a uh, it's fingering weight I believe so and uh, you can't see the dark burgundy and blue colors underneath but it's a whole uh, gradient so I can't wait to see how much yardage I got on it um, anyone want to guess I can tell you that the singles I did measure the yardage of the singles and the singles was um, okay so the fiber that her and Jeeves dried up is Ashen Ew okay okay see they keep coming up with new names uh, this fiber that I spun is from um, Corgi Hill Farms it is Pulworth Yak and Silk and it was a five ounce braid that uh, and she does gradients she dyes them as a gradient so you just spin from one end to the other and you can chain ply it or split it and do a two ply but uh, but yeah it's uh, she and she has pretty cool colors too um, so yeah anyway that's what this is uh, I'm not in camera view I'm there but thank you for joining me thank you for the company and I look forward to seeing how much yardage okay I had a question how much yardage do you think I got five ounce braid uh i did measure the singles with the yardage counter and i had 1500 yards of singles so i'm hoping i get i don't think i'll reach 500 yards but maybe 400 something so just type in your guess when you're ready but i will catch you all later 467 perfect okay let's aim, let's aim for that all right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Do I want to 